Say, I got the voice of victory. You said it like you, you said it on you said it grudgingly. Say, I got the voice of victory. <laughs> you know, you know how, how, how you shout when you have victory? There's a shout of victory. It's not uh, blurry, blurry. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shout of victory. You know, one day I went for a medical checkup, and I had, uh, they told me that it was, gonna, it was a bad case. That was some 20, 23, 22, 24 years ago. So when they did all the checks eventually, and they said, there's nothing there. You know, I tried, because I told them I'll be fine. So I, I composed myself. I said, I said, I told you. When my hand go, I'm not dying after all. You know that kind of thing? So as I got the door of the hospital, I said, yeah! <laughs> I said, yeah! You know, I'm going, wow! Hallelujah. You know, every day of our life, we have to go, wow! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Brother Hagin will say, you know, if they ask you where is Satan, say, check under your feet. Praise God. That's where Jesus put him and he never left. Amen. Amen. We've got the victory of Jesus. So Romans 15, quick. Verse 4. For what things soever were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through the patience and the comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now, the word there is our doctrine. Might have hope. So we have hope. I told you last week, I'm going to get there in a moment, that hope is an expectation, a supernatural expectation. I'm always expecting things to be good. What about you? That's why I don't surround myself with negative people. I, I, you can't be my friend if you're negative. Because I, I've got to be positive. The word of God is positive. All things are possible to him that believes. I believe that. Because I've seen that. You know, somebody was trying to tell me one day about God and miracles. I said, you're talking to the wrong person. Me, I have seen miracles. Go and talk to those who have not seen. I have seen. Hey, you can't take my experience away from me. Even with witchcraft. You can't be successful. Hallelujah. All right. So he says, they are written for our learning that we might have hope. So which means that when I read the word of God, hope, I told you, is a picture, right? Something you see. So God's word paints pictures for us. Right? Like a goal. Somewhere I'm going to get to. Something like that. So I'll get to that shortly. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, because I love to, as I love to motivate you in the word of God, I also love to warn you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Are you in church? Right, look at it. Verse 11. <clears throat> Paul says, Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they were written for our admonition, Okay, admonition, there's nothesia in the Greek, N-O-U-T-H-E-S-I-A. It means to warn you, to caution you. You see, God's word is positive. It has caution. Do you know the first things that God said to man in Genesis 2, uh, 17, 16, 17, in, in Genesis 1, 26? He says, uh, let us make man our image, our likeness, and then he blessed them. He wasn't talking directly there. But when he talked to Adam, Genesis 2, and 16 said, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is in the midst of the garden, you cannot eat of it. The day you eat of it, you'll die. That is not legalism. That's caution. Okay? It's not a scary caution, but it's a caution for our good. So God's word also contains caution. God's word has caution. Caution will put limits on you. Caution will have you uh, limits of things you should do and the things you should not do. So when we, when we talk about the victory of the believer, the Bible gives us the instructions on things to be cautioned about. So caution is a crucial part of God's word. And today I'm going to do a bit of that. Yeah, are you here? Aha. Uh -huh. We're talking about the believers' words of victory. So we have the caution that God's word teaches us about our victory. 
So in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it says, they are written for our admonition, which means that God's word is also given to us to caution us. To caution us. I said Romans 15, 4, it says, 3 and the 4, it says, to have hope. They are written to have hope. Then 1 Corinthians 10, 11, they are written for our caution. So I said that when God spoke to Adam, he told him what to eat and what not to eat. Genesis 2, 16, 17, right? The day you eat of it, you will die. That's not a curse. And you, you be careful of those who love to sweet, sweeten the word of God. And they say, no, 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 we don't, we don't do judgment. We don't judge. We actually judge, but we judge in love. So do not be comfortable in the church where they tell you what you want to hear. There are many things you don't want to hear, but they are good for you. If you talk to your lawyer, and your lawyer always tells you what you want to hear, one day you'll be in jail. If you talk to your doctor, and your doctor gives you what you want, one day you will die. If you talk to your banker, and your banker tells you what you want, one day, what will happen now? I don't know, but I think you, you start to use, oh my God, that's so bad. Guys, too hungry for God's word and God's power. I was preaching. You know, oh, you don't touch nobody. <laughs> so, okay, now you, you talk to your banker and, and you stop, and your banker tells you what you want to hear. Later, you start using piggy bank. All right? Because caution is God's word. Is that clear? Amen. Or your security tells you, um, oh God, please don't go out. Say, no. You know, say, even your angel will say, that's not my own jurisdiction. <laughs> so there's caution in God's word. Is that clear? All right, look at it. So he says, for our learning. Now, in Matthew 5, 17 and 18, quickly, Jesus said, I've not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Now, if you were in the first service, I explained the word fulfill to mean to take the place of another. So I've come to take the place of the law. Matthew 5, 17, 18. In Romans 10, verse 4, it says, Christ is the end of the law. I told the word end there does not mean finished. And people always, always use that for finished work of Christ. No. The word end of the law, Romans 10, 4, quickly get there, is the word uh, um, um, a goal. Telos. T-E-L-O-S. A goal. Okay? And I use an example earlier today. Uh, I said, for example, in growing up, in watching the Olympics, the fastest man in the world was Carl Lewis. So whenever somebody runs fast, you say, that's Carl Lewis. That's Carl Lewis. Why? Because the guy is acting like Carl Lewis. So he's fulfilling Carl Lewis, even though his own is 12.5, 100 meters. But after a while, we now had Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson was so fast, so fast, that after he was so fast, they discovered that something made him fast. So they slowed him down. So we waited and waited and waited. We had Linford Christie, all those guys. Eventually, one guy showed up a few years ago who's in boat. I think that's why they have the car boat. He's so fast. So you say, you are like who's in boat. So that word you are like is fulfilled. So Christ is the end of the law means exactly what the law wanted is what he did. So Fulfilled will mean to take the place of another, to act like someone. And the word fulfilled is always, is not always a positive thing. In Matthew 2, 1, the birth of Jesus fulfilled what Isaiah said in Isaiah 7, 14. We've done that study. Isaiah wasn't prophesying about Jesus. Isaiah was talking about his own country, uh, uh, the king Ahab. Uh, in Judah. But Jesus was in that position too. In Matthew 2.15, when Jesus came back from Egypt, Hosea 11 is fulfilled because exactly what happened to Israel happened to him. Matthew 2.23, when he settled in, in, in Nazareth, the same thing. Matthew 4.14, Matthew 8.17. So you see that consistently, the word fulfilled simply means these two events are similar. That's what it means. It doesn't mean that Isaiah was prophesying about Jesus. I've done that study with us over and over again. 
Isaiah wasn't talking about Jesus. It's like Jesus on the cross when he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And we found the same thing on the leaves of David. Now, I told someone this. This is a bit of technical detail. I said, do you know that Jesus need not to have said those words for Matthew to write it down? He said, what do I mean? I said, the moment I know that what happened to Jesus happened to David, I can actually put those words on the lips of Jesus. And I'm not telling a lie. So, fulfilled simply means you are just like David. When Jesus said that Judas was a friend that lifted up his heel against him in John 13, he was referring to Psalm 41 verse 9. But David wasn't talking about Judas. David was talking about Ahithophel. But Judas fulfilled Ahithophel. So, fulfilled does not mean a prophecy. Fulfill simply means you are acting like someone. So, in Matthew 12, 17, Matthew 12 and 17, then is something? Matthew 12 and verse 17. Notice this one. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall show judgment to the Gentiles. This is not peculiar to Jesus. Isaiah showed the gospel to Gentiles too. Jonah showed the gospel to Gentiles. Abraham gave the gospel to Gentiles. Moses gave the gospel to Gentiles. Joel gave the gospel to Gentiles. Jesus also gave the gospel to Gentiles. So this is Jesus acting like other people. Now look at Matthew 13 and verse 14. So which means the word fulfilled shows us a pattern, right? Come on. Shows us a pattern. And what we have devised called the identification unifier. Matthew 13 and verse 14. He says, now look at this one now. In verse 13, Jesus said, I spoke to them in parables because seeing they see not. Hearing they hear not. Neither do they understand. Now let's take verse 14 together. Let's go. That in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. Uh -huh. By hearing, and you shall not understand. Seeing, and not perceive. 15, is waxed, gross. And their ears are dull of hearing. Their eyes, they have closed. At any time, they should see with their eyes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And should become by that children. A good Isaiah 6. Isaiah was not talking about the audience of Jesus. Isaiah was talking about Israel in exile. Isaiah chapter 6. Where that text is from. Isaiah 6 verse 9. And he said, go and tell these people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. See ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of these people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. So was Isaiah talking to the same audience as Jesus? No. But did the audience of Jesus fit that role? Huh? Yes. So they fulfilled that role. In Matthew 13, verse 34 and 35, Jesus fulfilled the role of the psalmist. Psalm 17, verse 2. He spoke to them in parables. Why? He said, I will open my mouth and declare mysteries that have been hidden from the foundation of the world. Psalm 78, verse 2. So, Isaiah had an audience that was similar to Jesus. So, the audience of Jesus fulfilled Isaiah's role. Now, pause what I'm about to say. You know why Judas's case is precarious or terrible? Because we have Ahithophel. Ahithophel was very close to David. He's that guy that is your go-to guy. Said in the first service, he's a close guy to David. He gives him the counsel. Remember one brother like that? He was in the ministry. And then he's talking some years back, almost. If this is 2024, it's close to 30 years, but not 30 years. And he... We now had this brethren that I was, we're trying to reconcile because this brethren, there was, there was something within the church. So we're trying to get those brothers, these brethren to reconcile. So I will send him to the brethren to go talk to them, you know, and to say, talk to them. That there's no issue now. And, and you know that. So he will come back and say, Pastor, don't worry. He's been taken care of. So I'll tell him how I felt. And um, this was in 1998. 
And I'll tell him how I felt. He said, no worry, Pastor. It will be sorted. It will be sorted. Unknown to me, he was going to them to act with them. Don't mind him. He will instruct them to write letters, stinkers to me. I didn't know. So when I found out, I sat him down. We were sitting there uh, in front of Independence Hall. And I said to him, I said, you know, he said, what's wrong with you, Pastor? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me. I, can't, I, I said, you know, there's this person who has been so wicked that I trust him on. Has done me very much evil. And I can't believe that someone that's such a confidence would go behind my back and do this. You know, people don't know that betrayal is a very, very terrible sin. And I said, what do you think I should do to that person? He said, never allow him near you again. He said, he said that kind of person will experience struggles all his life. I said, are you serious? He said, yeah. He said, say it again. <laughs> so when I said, say it again, he now said, pastor, is it me? I said, you are the man. That is what Judas did. Ahitophel had done that already. And Ahitophel also committed suicide. So Judas fulfilling what David said is not because David prophesied about Judas. No. The reason why Judas ended up like that was because Ahitophel ended up like that. Don't get distracted. Was because Ahitophel ended up just like that. So, when Jesus said it would have been better if that fellow was not born. So you came to this world to fulfill that kind of role. So he cautioned them. He ended up just like Ahitophel. The same thing. So that was why when Jesus rose from the dead, and the apostles found out that Ahithophel, I mean, well, they're the same anyway, that Judas had killed himself, they now linked Judas to David. Not because David prophesied about Judas, was because Ahithophel had a four, sorry, Ahithophel had a seed, an heir. The heir of Ahithophel was Judas. So he simply took his place. They said, so everything David said about Ahithophel they just said it to Judas. It's be shopping like another thing, lest his days be few. Right? That was exactly what David said to Ito. So fulfilled simply means something that happened before it has happened again. So why are the scriptures written? Don't just read the good stuff that makes you excited. There are things that are written so that you caution yourself. Is that very clear? Is that very clear? You caution yourself. If it's in the word. And that's why I've told you the whole Bible is for us. We study it. You simply caution yourself. So when we find fulfilled, fulfilled simply means something that happened before. So God's word also shows us a pattern. Look at Matthew 21. Then it's on. You learning something? If you look at Ahithophel and Judas, it's exactly the same thing. Matthew 21. Tell your neighbor, so don't betray people. Say again, don't betray people. Don't hurt those who help you. I'm going to say this off record, but I was just explaining to you. I was talking to some pastors yesterday, and I said to them, you know, Pharaoh raised Moses, right? Unknowingly, right? Right? He raised Moses through his daughter, and Moses actually became a son. You know, I said, when Pharaoh found him out that he killed an Egyptian, he went after his life, and Moses ran. Moses did not return to Egypt till that Pharaoh was gone. Because if he was responsible for the detriment of that Pharaoh, God has set a pattern for us. 
that we can actually destroy those who help us. It had to be somebody else. Are you here? Are you following what I'm saying? So you mustn't do anything evil to people that have done you well. You can disagree with them. You won't believe with them. But don't hurt them. It's God that will fight for them. Even if they are unbelievers. Did you hear that? Don't ever do it. Just ensure you can disagree. You can even defellowship. Right? But do not destroy anyone who has built you. That the scriptures might be fulfilled. I said that off record because I'm still going to explain it in detail. Is that clear? I have to say it quickly. So, in short, an old employer of labor. You left the organization, you weren't well paid, but when you were paid, you took care of your children's fees, paid your way, always be grateful. Is that clear? You can disagree with the organization, you don't want there anymore, and all that. No. You never, ever, never, I was talking to a couple one time, elderly, this was 1994, and the man used to be, uh, uh, you know, he, he, he grew up through the ranks, so he tried, he was, his wife at the beginning of their marriage was responsible for virtually everything they had. So he got promotion, got money, and he's doing well. So as usual, you know, the wife was taunting him, you are doing this, you are doing that, I helped you when you were young. People say that it's not good for a Christian to talk like that. Well, God talked like that throughout the Bible. God reminded people all the time, you, remember? Aha. Uh-huh. Paul, you know, Paul reminded Philemon. said, oh boy, don't forget to, you owe me your life. If you don't want people to remind you the good you've done for you, don't accept it. And so, the man was now upset. He said, don't tell me. He said, how much is it? He now said, I was right there. He said, tell me the amount, I'll give you a check to cancel it. I said, uh, 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 don't say that, sir. You should have written that check then. The moment that you couldn't write it then, that kindness becomes invalid. You can't value it again. You couldn't do it. If all they gave you was a cup of water, the fact that you couldn't afford that cup there, that cup of water is now a million dollars. Never ever return kindness with anything less than kindness. Did you hear what I'm saying? So we must always, always, you know, you know, listen carefully. You know, Egypt, Egypt was so blessed because they preserved Joseph's life. They didn't receive salvation. These are basic Bible truths. So when you see that moment fulfilled, follow it very well. There is a principle you must read there that you must not disobey or disregard. Matthew 21. Learning something? All this was done, and before it was spoken by the prophet, tell you the daughter of Zion, behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek, sin upon the house, and the cult of the house. So basically, Jesus simply fulfilled that. Now look at one more, uh, two more, sorry, Matthew 24, 34. This generation shall not pass till all these things be done. That one is a serious one. Jesus said to them that because they rejected him, there was going to be desolation. He said, this generation of those who got me killed will not pass till all that destruction will happen. Which means that anywhere the gospel is rejected, the same thing will happen to them. Anywhere. It happened in scripture. It happened in the four gospels. It happened again and again and again and again. So he says, it won't pass till everything be fulfilled. What happened in Daniel's time, Jeremiah's time, repeated itself in Jesus' time, not as a prophecy, but as a pattern. Matthew 26 and 54. How then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that must be? How would we act upon the word? Matthew 26, 56. All this was one that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. What did they do? They came at him. To attack him, to kill him. He said, this is a pattern that is in scripture. Matthew 27 verse 9. The 30 pieces of silver, the price of him that valued, 
whom they of the children of Israel did badly. This had happened in Israel before. What Judas did had been there. So Judas was well aware of what he was doing. Matthew 27, 9, I've read that already. Matthew 27, 35. How they parted the garments of Jesus is simply a fulfillment of scripture. What's he saying? The generation of rejection of God's cancer just repeated themselves. So we can predict things by just reading the word. Is that very clear? Uh -huh. So that it might be fulfilled need not be always positive. Sometimes it's basically something done being repeated. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul warns us. Post 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Now all these things happen to them for examples. The word tupos in the Greek means a pattern. 1 Corinthians 10, 11. That they were written for our admonition upon whom the hands of the world are come. The word hands there means fulfillment. So we are fulfilling things that have happened before. And Paul is saying, pay attention to the Exodus people. If you say we are the redeemed nation, we are redeemed, redemption is an Exodus language. If you say we are delivered, it's an Exodus language. Firstborn, Exodus language. Church, Exodus language. All right? Passover, Exodus language. Blood of Jesus, Exodus language. Heirs of God, Exodus language. Kingdom of God, partly Exodus language. Priest of God, Exodus language. Then you don't pick and choose. Which means the same warning about the Exodus people you mustn't ignore. So, there are things that will connect people that never saw each other, but you see it in the Word of God. In Matthew 19, and verse 3 through to verse 7 and 8, they asked Jesus a question about divorce. And the man asked, he said, look, for which cause shall a man divorce his wife? Put away his wife, actually. Then Jesus answered Matthew 19, verse 4, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and cleave to his wife, and the twin shall be one flesh. Therefore, there are no more twin but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Now, watch the next verse. They said to him, why did Moses then give a, a writing of divorcement to put her away? Moses did not know this audience of Jesus. But notice what Jesus said. Can we take verse 8 together, Matthew 19? He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, did Moses know these people? So how is Jesus saying Moses was talking about them? Because they are alike. So every life, action has a pattern in scripture. Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives, but the beginning it wasn't so. So if we are warned about a generation, we are believers, but we also can walk in the flesh. Paul writing to the church in, Cor in Corinth, he said to them, he said, I could speak, I could not speak unto you as unto scripture, thank you, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I fed you with milk, not with meat. You can't able to, you aren't able to bear, neither are you able. So he says that though you are born of God, you are born of the Spirit, but your conduct is like that Exodus nation. You are acting like they're acting. So you have strife among yourself, always grumbling and murmuring and complaining. You know, that particular generation, they were used to murmuring. It was like their name, there was a brother like that fellowship then. We say he answers by murmuring. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. They were just like that. Any little thing they are complaining. And I'll say this to you, particularly homes, relationships. Murmuring is the door of the devil. I'll say it again. Murmuring and complaining is the door of the devil. Don't get so critical. You must be thankful. People who complain are prideful people. They are prideful people. They always think something is wrong with people. Something is wrong about things. They are also hypocrites because they are never perfect. So don't be given to complaining. Just complaining. I saw the couple down in the 90s. Interestingly, one of them was a relative of mine, a distant cousin. So I sat them down and I said, okay, let me do something. I said, both of you write 
what you see about the other person and what you don't want he or she to do. Elderly couple. I mean, they were interesting people. Um, I was a pastor. And I was caught in crossfire one time. And you know porridge? They splashed it on my the part the thing that day was that that evening was a fellowship in their house. That's how we did fellowship. Stop, bro, stop, bro. And one Muslim who was sitting down, who was living downstairs, had to come up and say, Ah, ah, she boni bag boni. Aren't you, aren't you Christians? Very, now, very soon now you'll be doing praise worship. She said it. He didn't even listen. He was a, the man had thrown the, oh God. So I told them eventually, you know, now I think the next two days or something, maybe they had done devotion, so they came back to Christ. So I said, okay, now you go write what you think she should change. You know, by the time the woman was done, you know when you are writing again with extra sheet. She just come up with extra sheets. He does this on Tuesday. This is what she has a record of all his sins. And I asked the man to write. He just wrote a line. He said, well, she's a good supporter of mine. Um, I just know that we are getting get better. Of course, though the truth is matter, he didn't show that on the Sunday. Because I think he was one that first threw the first javelin. And I think he had become a Christian afterwards, you know. So I said, but I said, okay, both of you give yourselves what you wrote. He didn't know that was what we were do. He said, you, you, yeah. ah. The man said, fool me. <laughs> so I said, you, you, you. She couldn't believe it. He would just say good things about her. I said, both of you are always fighting over who is right because we are both proud. But now I think he has let down his pride. You are all believers. Walk in progress. How can a human being who receives forgiveness of God judge people so badly? That's a hypocrite. In Luke 18, who is a hypocrite then? The guy said, I'm not like this publican. That's what he said. Every time you have to compare yourself, you are proud. He was comparing himself. And he wasn't telling a lie. He said, I'm not a fornicator, I'm not a daughter of this guy. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do women. You know, I'm not a Chelsea fan, sorry. Um, he was saying all those kind of things. I let you guys think you're out of 10th place. <laughs> well, I'm wearing blue today, so let me just stay off you for now. <laughs> so, you know, and I said, no, you just look at it. You, you, you don't be complaining, just complain. So we just like complaining. Complaining. There was one guy who, who works with me. Every time he picks the phone, you will have four things to say. He will start with the bad one. I said, why are you trained like that? One of us will tell me, one million dollars has come in, we thank God. You know, they announced the last one. Hey, the car broke down. Why you, uh, so I want to tell you, ha, hmm, hmm. The car broke down, oh. In fact, the man that was coming to repair it also broke down. Oh God, this is Monday morning, you know? <laughs> You know, ah, ah, and, and, and believers have a way of saying negative things. Say, it is well. No, don't be a murmurer. Is that clear? Don't be, don't be a murmurer. Don't be a complainer. Oh, ah. Some of us are, we're in the midst of unbelievers, but there's no joy around us. You just say, everything just from a fire. Say, good morning. Bless you. How are you today? Everybody in the office is saying, wow, maybe a contract came in or a client paid. He said, wow. Is that not the things of this world? <laughs> they don't collect your salary at the end of the month. <laughs> yeah, yeah, guy. <laughs> Why not just be happy? Someone just bought a car and you're saying, mm, car? At what age? Should I wait until 90? Why are you like that? See, I'm naturally happy. <laughs> and I'm also happy for people. <laughs> Amen. A woman rises up, 
Rise in her career, is it? No. In school, were they not beating you in class? You were quiet. They were beating us academically. You'll now be waiting for them to get married so they will slow down. You think I don't know? No. Don't, don't be suspecting people. It's a spirit of pride. Okay? Paul has warned us. Don't follow that example. Don't be carnal. Don't be carnal. Some of us who want to thank somebody. I thank you, though. You've been a very good supporter. I appreciate you. However, ah, ah. Please, that's all for another day. Ah. I was an MC um, at uh, one birthday. So we gave a guy the microphone. He said, oh, come on, say something about the celebration. He said, celebrate this one. However, let me say this. Hmm. He said, I just, go, 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 go. Ha. Who asked you for speech? Celebrate and get out. Just sit down. On people's birthday, you say, thank God for his life. However, I must also make you also human. No, you'll have been divine. Why are you like that? Glory to God. Say, I talk like Jesus. Say, I talk like Jesus. Amen. So you must watch your words. In Numbers 14, 28. Murmuring will die without words. Okay? Did you hear that? Murmuring and complaining will die without words. Don't forget, murmuring opens the door for the devil. Numbers 14. Murmuring opens the door for the devil. Numbers 14. So Paul said, is it possible for a believer to act like a non-believer? Ah, come on, talk to me. I know that's not you, amen. Is it possible to talk like a non-believer? Okay. Numbers 14. In verse 28. Let's take it together. Let's start from 27. Let's start from 26. Let's go. The way you are reading, you are murmuring. <laughs> All right, let's go, 26. Let's go. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying... How long shall I bear with this evil congregation? Uh huh. Now, the word evil doesn't mean um, bad, bad, bad. It means unstable, right? Let's go again. 27. How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I've heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur. Now, you know, they never murmured against God, they murmured against Moses. You say, but I didn't murmur against the Lord, it was my husband. It was just my wife. It was my children. I was murmuring against. Oh, can you? It was just my staff. It was just me. It was just my pastor. Or the church members. He said it's against me. Look at the next verse, twenty-eight. Let's read it loud and clear. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord. Shake it up. That which you wanted, you will get it. Murmuring is never positive. It's always negative. As you have spoken in my ears, so shall it be. So shall I do to you. Are you following this? Say, my words matter. Now, look at what happened. God called them, all right, out of Egypt. So they were in the land of, or in, the, in the wilderness. And God told them to go directly. They said they wanted to go and find out, to go and check it, whether the thing is there. Okay? So God allowed them to send spies. The spies now came by already last week. And the spies said that we were there, good place. In fact, very good place. But we cannot go in. That's double confession. You put the word of God and something else and you exalt that above the word. And Moses made that error by asking them to talk to the congregation directly. Joshua, his son, when Joshua did the same thing, sent the spies out, by the time they came back, he said, talk to me first. I will interpret to the people. We have one Holy Ghost meeting some 30 years ago. 
Everybody was prophesying and all that. And this sister, she sat down. And then he said, who has a word for us? She just came out. Praise the Lord, brethren. Hmm. Lord, say, I should tell you. That all these gifts of the spirit you are doing, there are some people, they have it, they are in hellfire now. No, some people are under the power of God. They open their hand. <laughs> <Yeah? laughs> so, I learned from that point. If I don't know you, come and tell the person to my ears. Say it here. Say, the Lord said I should tell the church. Am I not in the church? Say it to my ears. As soon as those guys started talking, and there were people in authority. The Bible says in Numbers 14, look at it. And verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. See, you know we normally think majority carries the vote. <laughs> that vote may be terrible. You know, it's possible for a whole city to be led astray. A man called Simon the sorcerer. The Bible says, look at it, Acts 8, quickly. It's like a, a particular person like that in the country who held everybody spellbound. Everybody. If I saw people you thought you would know, we say, eh, don't let's judge. Judge what? This one is clear. He's not a Christian. He said, look at Acts 8. This guy, Simon the sorcerer. Verse 9. Are you there? Let's take it together. Uh-huh. With before time in the same city, you sorcery. And bewitched where? So the whole city, look at verse 10. Let's go, verse 10. This is the, so the whole city. Look at the next verse. To him they had regard before that of long time he had bewitched them with what? So is it possible for an entire city to be bewitched? Is it possible for someone who is not a man of God to be believed in a place that is a man of God? You see me? So as everybody is saying it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean anything. So in Numbers 14 verse 1, are you here? It says, and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. The people wept that night. Everybody. See how they spread it. So we tell a broadcast message. Some put on their status. Some of you will use your status. Very carnal. Very, very carnal. You have something with your friend. Use your status. No matter what you say. I will succeed. What's wrong with you? Is it is actually a coward that does that? You know, I'll be using scriptures to fight your friends on your WhatsApp status. No weapon formed against you. Yeah, you know, that's the Bible. You know, I had your own version, even if the weapon is a friend. <laughs> All the enemies in my household. Who is the enemy? <laughs> All night. So watch who influences you. Watch it. All night. You know how it will happen is that one will just say, I have something to tell you, come. Don't let anybody hear. Just the three of us. That was good. Don't let anybody hear. All night. Everybody say, ah, we have all heard. That was how Judas got all the twelve to be unhappy. A woman came and just said, oh, Jesus, and she poured, you know, an alabaster box. Judas just felt, what's this? This is human worship. What's this one? I mean, the people are poor, you're putting an alabaster box. People are poor, they can't eat all night, every day. You are, give, you are giving a man of God uh, 100,000. Is that of God? That's what he was saying, you know. So people ask them, what have you done for the poor? Come, tell, come and tell us. Or you are poor too. So Judas was, he was upset. He felt Jesus was getting an attention he wanted. So gradually, he got everyone involved. Judas, say, what do you think about that? What do you think? I'm not saying that we should, I mean, Jesus is God. Jesus is our Lord. But just look at it. I mean, because he's our Lord, doesn't mean we should not talk now. What do you think? We can talk now. 
But that offering, what do you think about it? No, say, ah, we see it before now, but I see your point. But till everybody said, ah, why did she do this? Just one single person. Twelve people got the whole nation to be destroyed. Twelve. Oh, sorry, ten. They got the whole nation to be bewitched. What will you listen to? Is that clear? I tell people, I, I said, no weapon formed against our prosper. Don't allow the weapon to form. If you allow it to form, it will prosper. Don't let it fashion. Use the weapon like it don't fashion. So you keep quiet. The whole nation. Because they, they, they were responding to somebody they never saw. Somebody else saw it. Right? Did I tell you the story last week? About uh, a pastor I went to preach for. Was it here on Wednesday? It was Wednesday. Huh? That I said I preached for. It was Sunday. That the guy ran, the pastor that fell. It was Sunday. Okay, I won't say it again then. It's an expired uh, gist. He ran away. Pastor now fell for Gotha. It was running. Panic. Hey, 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 what's up? You know, the Lagos are like that. People drop a turning back. Why are you turning for? And they said there's something. What is it? We don't know. <laughs> so I refuse to fear. I walk in the light of the word of God. You following this? A whole congregation. You know what's about that congregation? God was in their midst. They had seen the power of God. They had seen great miracles. But you know what? Just some elders got them to doubt the word of God. You know, years ago when I began to lay hands on the sick, my first healing meeting, I called people out and laid hands on them. Everybody I laid hands on, like I laid hands on them so that I can go to the hospital. I believe those that were not sick before now got sick. So I was so discouraged. I felt, ah, what happened? And I prayed. So someone came to me and he said to me, he said, why did I lay hands? I said, ah, the Bible says, no, 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 no. no." He said, Mark 16 is for apostles. Are you an apostle? I knew I was not. He said, he said, he has explained, he said, the Bible says, lay hands on the sick, cast out demons. He said, you laid hands on everybody. How do you know some of them don't have demons? Ah, I said, it's true. So he now said to me, he said, because if you lay hands on someone that has demons, the demon will transfer. Do you know, as he was speaking, I started shivering. No, I'm not joking. And I felt sick. And I felt, why did I lay hands? Why did I lay hands? You know, and I felt sick. Because he said so, and I believed him. So I refuse false report. I've got a voice of victory in the name of Jesus. So there's caution, okay? You must watch who and what you listen to. Look at Matthew 12. Glory to Jesus. Do our words matter? Do our words matter? It matters. I told you, your words praise God. Your words pray to God. Your words heal the sick. Your words get people filled with the Holy Ghost. Your words edify people. So you should know your words can also convey negative things. Matthew 12. You in church? Verse 34. Verse 33. Let's go. Let's take it together. 33. Let's go. He that make the tree good and his food good. Or else make the tree corrupt and his food corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. 34. O generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart. Say my heart. As abundance goodness. Grace of God. And the power of God. I have a good deposit. On my heart. And my mouth speaks good things. In the name of Jesus. Now watch this one now. Let's take verse 35 together. Let's go. No. Uh-huh. 
Say, I'm a good man. I got a good treasure. Say, I'm a good man. I got a good treasure. Say, it brings forth what? Good things. And an evil man brings forth what? 36. Let's go. And I say unto you, uh huh. Uh huh. 37. Are my words important? So, which means I'm going to give account of the things I see. Your words. If your words won't mean anything, then the day you said, I believe Jesus is my Lord, should not have meant anything. That was what got you in the new bath. We got a path of victory. Hallelujah. I see no defeat. I see no failures. In the name of Jesus. So I said, but what if you fail here? I'm learning something. I'm learning how not to do it. Praise God. Things are working together. Aligning themselves together. In the will of God concerning me. In the name of Jesus. Are you still there? Look at Matthew 15. So sometimes, what you are saying may not even affect you, it may affect other people. Because death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those that love it, who the food thereof, may affect other people. Matthew 15. If I notice that I'm your pastor, if I see someone who speaks differently, I will never, ever recommend you to leave people. Never. Never. One of the ways I choose leaders is how they talk. How do you talk? How do you talk? How do you speak into people's lives? Because God will send treasures your way that won't appear like they are good things. You must know how to change people's lives by words. What am I using this morning? Words. Words. Use the right words. In your home, use the right words. Don't use words you saw on Netflix. Amen? Use the words of the Bible. Not thou said, my beloved. My beloved husband. No, that's what I'm saying. Words that align with God's will. Amen? Glory to his name. It's good to have a spouse who walks in the word. Kenneth Copeland told the story when they were having a serious problem in, the, in their ministry. And they said he was walking around the house, Brother Copeland. He's actually Papa Copeland, but we call him Brother Copeland. He's walking around, he's going, and the wife went to him, laid hands on him. Satan, leave him alone! Man said, what? So I just cast out the demon out of him. The wife. And he said, oh, need to be where? Oh, need? Let's go on vacation. They said, let's go. They actually went on vacation. They went to a prayer board. So we're going to stay two weeks in the world. We're going to get all the Higgins books that we read when we were younger. Feed on it. And we're coming, out, we're coming out of this one. And they did. Have that kind of influence on your family. That when you come in, you change the atmosphere. Everybody's down and you say, no, no, no. God's word is working here. In the name of Jesus. Fear has no rule here. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. We're united family. We're walking strong. We're taking territories. We're taking down the enemy. Praise the Lord. Are you here? Don't get your husband to be afraid of business deals. Or your wife. Say, hmm, sweetheart. Hmm. Maybe this is the only house we have. Hmm. <laughs> it's just fear. Because you just watch a movie. Lion of Judah, what's that name? <laughs> and you're afraid. Is that the name? A tribe of some, something. See, so my words matter to me. Choose your words because they matter. Choose what you will say. Under pressure. Don't say it was under pressure. Ecclesiastes 5 2 says that don't say it's an, it's, 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 it's an error. Watch what you say. I refuse to murmur. Because murmuring is a sin. 
Murmuring is a sin. Murmuring is the opposite of thankfulness. Matthew 15. Are you in church? So I said, your words may not even affect you alone. They will affect people around you. Thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto God. Say thanks be unto God. A brother came to me years ago. He's still, still my friend. He says, I want to talk to you about something. I said, I'm not going to hear you. He said, why? I know what you want to say. What you want to say is negative. So he said to me, you mean I came all the way, you won't hear me? No, I don't have to. I didn't ask you to come. And God didn't send you. He was upset. Years later, he came for one of our camp meetings. He said, thank God you didn't listen to me. I said, ah, me, yeah, I knew. I was not going to listen to you. Praise the Lord. I believe God's word. So you have to caution yourself. You have to caution yourself. See, I caution myself. So I watch myself. So when we're in the home, let's watch what we say. Now, don't, don't watch what you say when you are with the right people. When you now get to the office, ah. Unbelievers say, ah. Me, I want to say my mind. <laughs> say, I speak the word of God because it's the right thing to say. Say, I speak the word of God because it's the right thing to say. If you can't speak the word of God, shut up! Hallelujah. Just keep quiet. Matthew 15. Watch this now. In verse 17. Let's take it together. Through to verse 20. Let's go. Do you not understand yet? Huh? I'm waiting for everybody. Let's go. That whatsoever enters in at the mouth goes into the belly and is cast into the dry. Huh? But those things which proceed come from the heart. And they what? Look at verse 19. Evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts. Uh huh. 20. So even when it comes to sin habits, the words that I hear and the words that I speak. Watch what you hear. Because what you hear are also in words. Watch what you say. So I got victory. Over the flesh, over the devil, and over the world. A brother came to me years back. He said, Sir, I want to see you. I said, I'm here. You're already seeing me. He said, I don't know what to do. I said, Go back. When you know what to do, let's talk. Ah. So he came back when I was, I, was a, I was a 40 meeting. I think I was preaching. So he came and said, Sir, uh, like I was saying yesterday, sir, uh, I, maybe you were very busy. And uh, actually, I'm very confused. I know I said, When you are not confused, let's talk. So I think the third time, he got the point. So he came and said, sir, I know what to do and I'm not confused. I said, now let's start from that. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the light that you have. You cannot be confused. See, I'm not confused. I may not lay my hands right now on what to do, but I will know what to do. And I am not confused. I'm not confused. In the name of Jesus, I'm not stranded. I cannot be stranded in the name of Jesus. I'm led by the Spirit of God. I'm led by the Spirit of God. I'm led by the Spirit of God. Temple around me, I say, well, I may not exactly figure it out, but I'm led by the Spirit of God. I'm led by the Spirit of God. God, I know my life is by providence. God walks all things out of the counsel of his will. He leads me by his spirit. If I don't hear it in the morning, he'll tell me at night. If I don't hear it at night, he will use somebody to talk to me. I know it will work out well. Hallelujah. Years ago, I had this my friends. You know, we were in the ministry together. So when they're talking, I'll say, I cannot fall. They were upset that I said that. I said, I cannot backslide. They became very upset. I said, but what are you saying? I said, I can't fall. They thought I was boasting. I wasn't boasting. I was trusting in God. So one day, you know, and I was very, I was a bit, uh, I was a bit of a rascal, really. So I now got them praying for me. I heard them pray. Oh, Lord, touch his heart. I, I said, stop praying for me. They looked at me. I entered their room. I said, I said, don't pray for me. That's a wrong prayer. Pray for yourself. You are the ones in unbelief. I said, I won't fall. I wasn't bragging on myself. No, I can't brag on myself because I have the capacity to fall. But I trust God. 
is able to keep me from falling. In the name of Jesus, Paul said to Timothy, he said, that which you are given by God, keep by the Holy Ghost, give it to me. I keep by the Holy Ghost. Jude said, he's able to keep you from falling. I won't fall in the name of Jesus. I won't fall in the name of Jesus. I remember I read one book talking about ministers falling. And I told someone, I said, I won't read this book again. He said, why? It's too negative. It's too negative. God keeps us. God keeps us. God keeps me. In the name of Jesus. So what the things that you say? What the things that you affirm? Watch your words. Are you in church? Watch your words. Go to Numbers 14. Two people stood out. Numbers 14 and verse 4. Listen. Don't be afraid to stand out. Do you hear me? Did you hear what I said? Don't be afraid to stand out. Don't be. Glory to his name. Don't be afraid to stand out. Don't be. And don't let any fear motivate you. No prophecies, evil prophecies. I've gotten enough in my life. I was in one. It was like a congregation of prophets. We were prophesying. Pastor Allah was there. 26 years ago. 20, uh, 26 years ago. Almost 26 years. Anyway, speaking, said, one, of the, they, one of the boys said, one of them is even here now. I was talking about me. And I started laughing. That in five years, the Lord said, they'll be out of the ministry. In five years. He was talking about the tongue interpretation. And I laughed. <laughs> I said, I'll see you in five years. Now, I didn't sit down one. I went to sleep. And I began to use my own words. Because what matters are the things I see. I began to pray in the Holy Ghost, use my words. Not because I was afraid. But I knew that my own life was according to what I believed. Five years after. That's uh, 2003. Right? I went to see the major prophets. So what are you doing now? I said, what I was doing five years ago. Three years after, no, about six years after. I went to preach for one of the prophets of that day. One of the brothers here told me. I spoke in his church. Why? I don't have anything against them. But my life operates by God's words. Is that clear? And that's how your life should be. Are you going to, are you going to make mistakes? Oh, sure, I do make mistakes. I made mistakes yesterday. I thought Fulham was going to beat Chelsea. That's an error. But God is saying he's still going to work it out. When I saw Newcastle lead Man City, I was already counting my, not just my chicken, I was counting my barbecue. So I saw 3 2. The brain I can play with. I'm afraid. Don't put that on the table. But no, but the point was you, you see, your life is according to what you say. You get it? Did anybody's confession get you born again? So you are saved in Jesus' name. Then you became saved. No, it was your confession that got you saved. Same way, it's only your words that work in your life. Hallelujah. See, I channel my life according to God's word in the name of Jesus. Sin will never defeat me. Sin will never overcome me. In the name of Jesus, sin has no dominion over me. I walk in victory over every habit in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God's word is working. Say again, God's word is working. Say again, God's word is working. Numbers 14 and verse 4. Let's read that one together. Let us make a captain. And let us return to where? To Egypt. Let us all return to Egypt. That was what the whole congregation said. Look at the next verse. 
Moses fell on their faces. Now look at six. Joshua the son of Nun. Uh huh. What happened? Just two guys. He said, No. Learn to say no. Learn to say no. That is not me. Hallelujah. Learn to say no. Glory to God. That is not me in the name of Jesus. Are you following this? Learn to say no. Look at verse 30. Thou to shall come to the land, I swear to the, you shall not come to the land, except Caleb and Joshua. Verse 30. Except Caleb and Joshua. In verse 30. But Joshua the son of Nun, Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which are the men that went to set their lips still. So these two men stood out. Say, I stand out. In the word of God, I stand out. In the name of Jesus, I stand out for healing. I stand out for victory. I stand out for supernatural provision. I stand out for supernatural direction. In the name of Jesus, I'm forming godly habits. I stand out in the name of Jesus. These two guys stood out. Let them stand out. Praise God. Let them stand out. Don't fall for everything. Stand on the word of God. Look at verse 24. Let's take it together. But my servant Caleb, because what? Say, I've got the spirit of faith. Say, I've got the spirit of faith. Say, I've got the spirit of faith. Never be neutral. Say, I've got the spirit of faith. He saw something else. Fear paints a picture. Faith paints a picture. I believe God's word. I believe God's word. I believe God's word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're walking in the light of the word of God. We're walking in the light of God's word. In the name of Jesus. So God's taking care of me. Say, God is 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 taking care of me. Not he will, he is. Taking care of me now. Taking care of me now. Don't follow that example. Don't join people on Twitter to murmur. Against all, all men are, all women are, most women are. So the truth of nowadays, well, they're not in my own house. Hallelujah. Got no Gen Z in my house. Amen. I got chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation. Praise God. Peculiar people. Praise God. Their habits are from the word of God. Is that clear? There was a man whose son was in the drugs was heavily in the drugs. The man that's very prominent, I will just mention the name, was really in the drugs. Was a, he joined a hippie club, hippie cult. Every time the man would lay hands, the wife was bothered. He lay hands and say, he's going to preach the gospel. He would lay hands on him, the guy would go back to smoking. He would lay hands on him again and again. As of 1997, that guy had raised 20 people from the dead. The words came to pass. It will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. Just make sure you are not giving up. Is that clear? Make sure you aren't giving up. No matter what people are saying, say God's word. Say God's word. Say God's word. Say God's word. Don't say, the whole country is, is your name, whole country. The whole Nigeria is your name, whole Nigeria. And some people, they have bad reports. They want a bad gang for the bad report. So they want you to join them. You know, Someone was talking in one group I was in, my alumni group said, did you know that the dollar is now this amount? So someone else said, glory to God. Ah. So I said, why do you say, say because it's paying me. You know, that's very true. You don't know. It's true. So people are happy because they are selling things abroad. Those who are abroad are also happy. Don't mind them. Because now it has more value. Yoruba said the rain that fell on sugar cane fell on bitter leaf. (laughs) 
Ojo to lo so reke, to lo so So I take advantage of every situation. In the name of Jesus, my path is victorious. I see no defeat. In the name of Jesus. Sickness won't kill you. Fear won't kill you. In the name of Jesus. Emotions will kill you. The word of God is raining in your life. In the name of Jesus. There is no confusion in your path. On your mind. Or in your life. In the name of Jesus. You are walking in the light. There is no shadows around you. In the name of Jesus. You walk in victory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your health is getting better. It's getting better and better and better and better. No, you know, you can walk out of this place, you should feel pain. She says it's getting better. In the name of Jesus. Soon you will rise up to that confession. Soon you will get up to that confession. God's word is walking in my life. In the name of Jesus. I cannot be defeated. And I will never quit. I cannot be defeated. And I will never quit. I cannot be defeated. And I will never quit. The battling and habit. Don't quit. You will win. I will never ever be defeated. And I will never quit. Lift your hands and worship God. Never. There are some nevers we say. There are some nevers we say. Why are we saying it? Because we trust God's word. Why are we saying it? Because the word of God is working. Say that never now. Say your own never now. Go ahead and say, never. I will burn for the Lord. The fire will never go down. I walk in divine healing. Sickness will not reign over my life. Never. In the name of Jesus, I will never be overcome by emotion. Sin will not rule my life. Never. I will never be stranded. My needs are met. My bills are paid. Help comes to me. Help comes to me. In the name of Jesus, my ministry is growing. It's growing. I raise more disciples. I, lay, I, 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 give more, I give more to the work of the gospel. Come on. Come on, speak God's word. Say your own never. Never. Our home is secure. Our home is strong. The love of God rules in our home. Hatred will not rule our homes. In my career, I blossom. I grow in ideas. I get more effective and more skillful. In the name of Jesus. Come on, speak God's word. Never let your words change. Say it all the time. 